Watch it now. Don't go too fast. You know, I love to coach. I have helped them achieve success, and I've helped them to reach their maximum performance. This $6 million temple of sport is a center of excellence in the world of athletics. It's home to the famous Santa Monica Track and Field Club and super coach Tom Tellez with his keen eye for talent. I would say that the most important thing is that the athlete has the mind to go with the body. That, you know, sprinting is intelligent. And I think that the, the athletes that I've had have been very successful have those traits. They're intelligent, they're stable individuals, and they're willing to work and listen. Tellez is coached to a brace of world champions, including Leroy Burrell, Mike Marsh, Floyd Hurd, and the incomparable Carl Lewis. Carl came to me as a long jumper first, and that's what I recruited him, and I taught him how to run in the approach to the long jump, because it's a, basically the same concept as you run the 100 meters. He's very coachable, and whatever I tell him, he believes me 100%. There is no question in his mind because he knows that I'm going to try to give him the best that I know how. And, uh, and I know him pretty well after 15, 16 years. I know exactly what he's thinking about. What you need from a coach throughout your career are his eyes, or his or her eyes, because you can't see the things you do. You need someone to see what you're doing so that you can apply those uh, mistakes and correct them right there at the time. Ain't nothing we can't handle. Sure uh, when he was a young man, I remember him coming in my office and said, I do not want to work for a living. I want to run for a living. And that's what he did. His goals and his, his vision was much greater than mine. And uh, I told him one time, I said, well, the world belongs to those who dare. And he's that type of person. My, my, my system for starting the race is, is very simple. I don't visualize and all that kind of stuff like people say, all the Zen stuff. What I do is just um, think about the specific technical elements that I have to do when I'm standing there. And then when, when the uh, starter calls us to our mark, um, I basically just get down to my mark and clear my mind. I am aware of my surroundings. That's the correct way to describe it, but I, I don't react to my surroundings. Um, the best race is run within your lane, so that's what we concentrate on doing that all the time. I, I'm very confident in my top end speed. I'm very confident in my race, so I have to keep my mind on not making mistakes. picked the right place to be and I think he picked the right coach I think that I understood Carl right from the beginning you know we had a great relationship and he felt very confident you have to be in the right environment to really progress I believe that there was never a purity of sport because someone was always making money the organizers the sponsors and the owners why well, is it pure for everyone else to make money when the athletes starve? How is that pure? That yeah, isn't pure. It's a business. It's a business to have fun. I mean, it's no different for me what I do than someone else who has a job that they love. And this is my job, and I love it. It's, it's so much fun, I, I, I can't describe it. And the bigger the paycheck, the greater the importance of rigorous scientific training. The thing that separates uh, Coach Telez from other coaches is that he has the technical background on the mechanics of running. He applies the laws of physics to our competition. I hear people all the time say, oh, sports are 95% mental and 5% physical. That's bull. I don't believe it. I'd never believe it. Forget it. Throw it out the window. Because somebody can be 95% smart and slow and they're not going to win a race. I, as a coach, am not a psychologist. You know, I, that's not what I do. What I try to do is prepare the athletes 
technically and physically to get the job done. I teach them what their event is about. So when the adrenaline's pumping and they're in races, they always go back to what they were taught. The 100 meter dash is athletics refined to its purest form. It's the jewel in the crown of track and field. 50 paces in 10 seconds, each one calibrated with mathematical precision. The idea of coming out of the blocks is to get the runner in a position to accelerate. Zero. Inertia is zero, and you have to come overcome inertia, and that's where you apply the most force against the blocks. I don't step into any race either confused or not knowing exactly what I'm supposed to do. And that's a big burden taken off your chest because a lot of people get to the line saying, I hope I have a great start. I get there saying, well, if I do this, 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 I know I will have a great start. And that's what we concentrate on. A veteran of three Olympics with eight gold medals, Carl Lewis still rehearses the elements of his race. Under the close eye of Tom Tellez, the race is dissected into its component parts. Go. I can get everyone to move faster and quicker at the start, but if you do that, then you're going to reach your maximum velocity sooner than what you should. And if you do that, you can't maintain speed that long, or you, and you'll decelerate. The human body is only capable of accelerating for five to eight seconds. After that, it's about maintaining speed and controlling the inevitable deceleration. The race is 100 meters long and one lane wide. The athlete must cocoon himself in that lane, block out his competitors. This race is not with them, it's with time itself. anything always let the body work the way it's supposed to work you know you start forcing things and that's when you go slow you know you have to get everything all those cells firing together you know the whole body working together as a unit if you accelerate and distribute your energy over 60 to 70 meters which is where you should then you only have to have 30 meters to maintain and decelerate but if you come out of the blocks and reach your maximum velocity or acceleration at 50 meters, then you have 50 meters to maintain and decelerate. And you can't do that. It's like driving a car when you get to fourth gear. Uh, the engine's racing harder, but when you get to fifth gear, you can still maintain that speed, but it's a more relaxed tempo and that's kind of the difference we try to do from that 60 70 meter pace onto the finish line they stride five times a second each stride spans more than two meters during each foot strike the sprinter's body must produce nearly half a ton of vertical force was caused for the first 10 meters. The top speed is slightly less than 44 kilometers per hour. In one race, a field of eight runners produces enough energy to boil a jug of ice in 10 seconds. And then you have the last part, which is about deceleration. In other words, you're slowing down and it's the athlete who slows down the least is going to be the winner.